But now, next up is pudding, where Kim and Aggie from How Clean Is Your House are actually going to try and attempt to beat me with their recipe for a trifle. She's so yes. nervous, actually. <laughs> Ladies, can we get going? Uh, nice, clean hands. Uh, don't right, get Kim. nervous, cos I'm here. Don't we start getting twisted, cos I affect men like that, you know. <laughs> right, come on. Oh, oh, dear, oh, dear. Right. Now, I'm doing a bit of a sort of uh, straightforward classic trifle. Um, we're doing a trifle with caramelised peaches and clementine, very festive. Done with the most amazing custards made with vanilla, and then a nice twist at the end. We're going to get some salted peanuts and turn them into a caramel salted peanut. Aggie, yes. tell me what you're doing. Okay, I'm uh, I'm beating up my egg yolk and the sugar and vanilla paste. Yes. I'm going to put a wee bit of uh, cornflour in because I'm slightly nervous that it it'll split. And I don't want that to happen. Okay. And I've also can I just say I've made yep. my own trifle sponges That's here. That's amazing. With goose eggs that I bought from a farm. That's fantastic. Yesterday. You may as well go home, in so, my opinion. <laughs> oh dear, I oh do. So we've got to bloody well win this. We have Kim. still got to win this. So for my trifle, I'm going to make um, the most amazing custard, but very simple custard, not like Kim and Aggies. This is sort of done with sugar, eggs, and fresh vanilla pods. Do you know what? I've used the wrong <laughs> cream. I love you already. You swear like a chef. If Aggie wins, she's going to cry like a baby. I sense that, you know. I'm bloody determined to win. Sorry. I'm determined no, to win. No, I'm, no, so, no. I'm afraid I'm very competitive. Now, what's the most important tip you could give to anyone out there about keeping their kitchen at home clean? What would you say to first? To keep your um, wiping up cloth absolutely clean. Stop spreading the bacteria. And clean as you go? Absolutely, clean as you go, that's right. Clean as you go. And get everyone else to muck in. So the peaches we're just going to quarter, Some roast them off in a little bit of sugar. The exciting thing about caramelising these peaches is done with the most amazing sugar, very fragrant muscovado sugar. And that gives a really nice sort of rich, syrupy colour onto the peaches. Well, will you stop that, oh, for goodness this sake? This man's a big man, you know. Dear, oh dear, you know, I feel like I've got a wiener curry this. back in the kitchen. A bit of uh, here, do you need to take so, off? These love hands are growing a bit. Mind you, I don't mind hanging up. The... <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Shit, I feel like I've got a baby rhino Kim, on stop. my back. You're putting him off his food, for God's sake. If they're trying to distract me, it really is working, you know that, because I can't, can't just concentrate on anything right now. God, I've never had a 64-year-old grab my boobs like that. Um, now I'm giving the Swiss roll a little bit of a sort of, um, bit of a Scottish effect, so I'm sort of dousing it in Grand Marnier. <laughs> uh, can I just say, <clears throat> I can't believe the mess. I Look know, at the state you know, of it! Right, How right. clean is your house? Wait till you see the mess I make of you, dear lady. Look at the floor! Deliberate. I've roasted the peach and the clementine off in um, muscovado sugar. They've sort of um, been caramelised, beautifully coloured, and now I'm just going to add them to the sponge. And then we're going to add the custard. They're very splashy things, though, you know. I know uh, not only is my brain set, but the custard's about to set, so I'm going to put that in the fridge to cool down. And once that's nice and cool, we're going to finish it with a creme fraiche finished with muscovado sugar and hopefully get rid of that honey monster. I'm finishing my trifle off with some salted caramel peanuts. It's just salted peanuts in a pan, a sprinkle of sugar and a sprinkle of salt. But this is not any salt. This is not a powder salt. This is called sel de garne. It's a sort of rare grey sea salt. Very powerful, very delicious and it goes well when you make a caramel. I just leave them to cool down. Rolling pin, break them up and sprinkle them on top of your trifle. La, 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 la. Custard on top. Now, most importantly, get it in the fridge and let it set for about 35, 40 minutes. <laughs> now, I've been in another woman's kitchen this week and like so many women I've met, she reckons she hasn't got time to cook. I'm so busy because I run my own theatre school, hence why I never have time to cook. I'd really like to learn to cook something that's Fast, obviously, it doesn't take too, too much preparation time. Something that's quick, something that's healthy, something that's not too complicated, which will get my confidence off a bit. I think it's really important to be able to cook, especially when I've got a husband and a little baby. Let's eat it all up. I'm very embarrassed that I can't, actually. <laughs> OK. Now, why can't you cook? A few reasons, really. Mostly because my mum can't cook. Really? So you're blaming her? I'm to totally blaming her, yeah. But you must be able to do absolutely these... Well, the simple things, surely. I can do toast. Toast. Ready break. Ready break. Cool, dear, oh dear. My solution is a fast food fix, but real fast food. Pasta. Um, fresh tagliatelle, um, something that is not too complicated. Um, we could use dried uh, linguine or spaghetti, but this is a, a fresh tagliatelle. The secret is, of course, cooking the pasta very, very simply. 
and boiling water, salty boiling water, touch of olive oil in there, and you can mix all these things in there. Things like um, marinated artichoke hearts okay. um, and, you know, olives, oh. smoked um, pancetta. Great for pasta dishes, easy to fry, really full of flavour. These general things should be in your store cupboard, you know that. I'm going to teach Rachel a simple pasta dish that she can cook in ten minutes flat. I'm going to use some fresh crab, some fresh um, chilli, some lemon juice, some parsley through there and just mix it up, that's all it is. The hardest thing, of course, is just cooking the pasta. Yeah. Apart from that, everything else is self-explanatory. Great. First thing what you do is put on a pan of water. You put the water in, right. it's not going to be good. So take the pot. Oh, I'm tap. sorry, it's not coming from the kettle. Uh, no, <laughs> no, dear, oh dear. The lights are on, but Rachel's gone home. <laughs> OK, chopping board on here, please. Yeah, when was the last time you chopped the chilli? Yeah, never. Never, good. <laughs> OK, get the chilli and just rub it together like that. Mm -hmm. OK? And what that does, it loosens all the little seeds in the centre. Right. Once you've taken the top off, slide down the centre like that. Right. OK? And then just open it up with your fingers, look. Just push all the way down. And what that does, it gets rid of the seeds, and the seeds are actually hotter than the chilli. OK? That's what worries me about chillies. Yeah, well, I mean... Stinging my eyes and, yeah, yeah, you know... Yeah, I mean, most important thing now is, of course, by the time you finish chopping it, OK, just wash your hands very, very quickly. Right. Get the chilli. Just take nice, small slices there. Three ingredients so far. Pasta. Crab and chilli. Now just need some parsley, yeah? And it's flat leaf parsley, so it helps us cut down the strength of chilli and just make it a lot more flavoursome. Water's come up to the boil. Nice handful of pasta. Yeah. Into the water, please. So that's the other thing, I never know how much pasta to cook. Pass me the bowl that you're going to serve in. You get your bowl. Yeah. OK, and you look there. OK. Now, that looks a nice portion. Yeah. Yeah? So a spoonful of chilli's in there. Yeah. Yep. Good. Crab meat in. Good. Excellent. You're standing away from the stove and you look like you're really nervous and scared about it. Get close I'm to it. I'm scared of the fat. Yeah, no, you've got to get close to it. OK. And you look like you're in control of it, yes? OK, yeah. How can you handle 320 kids I know, and I you know. can't handle one little fry I'm pan? I'm scared of the fat. It's no, it's it burn me. No, it's cooking. That's called cooking. And I want you to squeeze some fresh lemon juice in there. Fresh parsley over there. OK, nice. So lift off one strand. And we want what we're looking for is a bit of a bite in there. Mm. Nice. That's quite firm. Is yeah, that about firm. right? That's just, just, just about right. Mm -hmm. Into your pasta. Now, it's really important to get all that crab meat mixed into it now. Mix that up. OK, but look, you're not doing it well. Get the spoon in there again. I want you to mix all that in there like that. OK. All of it in there together. Yeah. Quicker than a microwave meal. Um, without a doubt. Yeah. Two really nice bowls. Just a smell. Yeah, it's just yeah. gorgeous. Ta-da! So that's a meal for two in less than ten minutes. Here you go. Right, go the for truth. it. Mm. I'm impressed. I can't believe you've done this. I know. It's not you, did bad. It, you, did, you did it all. Well, not too much help. A little bit of help from the boss. Right. James, happy? Very happy. Yes, yeah. yeah, really nice. Really yeah. nice. Don't need to be scared of something. Mm. Stick to something really, really simple. <laughs> yeah. And just climb the ladder with it. Yeah. yeah. And we use crab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next time, maybe prawns. Next time, roasted vine tomatoes. And, you know, just maybe think about it during the day and pick up the stuff on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. No, no excuses. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Yes. Don't Thank stop. you. Do I not won't. stop. Yes, okay. and you. stay in there, madam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. OK, excited? <gasps> I'm so nervous. Let's just put them side by side. I always like to see them before we start serving them. Yeah. Like, have a quick look underneath. Yeah, lots of jam. Too much jam, actually. Uh, sponge and um, looks a lot, of, a lot of alcohol shaking down the bottom well, there. Natural. Can I just say good luck first? Because I think you'll need it. OK. Okay, well, oh. I wish I'd got frozen raspberries because these fresh ones have got no flavour whatsoever. Oh, really? Yeah. What do we expect? Hey, don't be licking your fingers, you. Oh, is that all? Oh, he stuck it in there. Oh, God, isn't that awful? <laughs> okay, Jean Baptiste. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I've got to serve mine first because these ladies are messing around again. We are not messing one's around. One's trying to grab my bollocks, the other one's trying to pickle around. it. We're there now. Might have a little taste while we're. In fact, have you got a straw? <laughs> don't be funny. Right, right, don't be funny. Now. Here's ours. Oh, stop. It's so alcoholic. <laughs> I, I, oh, God, that is very good. I just need a little bit more... I, I need a little bit more time cooking the peaches. That is very good. That's beautiful. Oh, God, that is so yeah, good. I'm really happy you like it, you know. This week's tasters, I'll try my dessert yeah. first. Yeah. I must admit, I quite like the composition. Yeah. I like the colours mm. in that. I like it yeah. because there's a good balance between the salt and the sweet. Okay. Dessert yeah. number two now. Thank you. Mm. It's very... This one is mm. sloppy. It's, it's delicious. Yeah. I find it too sweet for me. Bite. Julia, did you, do you prefer dessert number one or dessert number two? I think I would definitely go for the second one. I go for number one. The number two is definitely the best. 
Let's get the frog in. Where is They're he? Both... Jean-Baptiste, s'il vous plaît. Put these two ladies out of the misery yeah. and tell me... Who's the winner? Of course, who's the winner? The, the winner is this week. Yes. Kim and Aggie. Oh, get oh. out! Oh, no. No, you're joking, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's tasting anything? them up there? Yes, indeed. <laughs> they've got suggest, they've got crap. Can't yeah, they? I suggest. I suggest. I suggest we get their mouths oh, cleaned oh out. God, Are you sure? Yes, I am. Oh, piss oh, off. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god, I'm so sorry. Because yours is so much better, actually. It really, is <laughs> so much better. Oh my god. God dear. Those two women, you know, they're absolutely obsessed with cleaning. They do seem to be. No, no they're just mad. I mean, nearly as mad as you are with your organic food. I'm not especially mad. They, they are mad. If, if, Crazy. if cleanliness is next to godliness, you have been cooking there against the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, you've been finding out about sort of cleaning out your insides, right? Well, theoretically, cleaning out your insides. It's a big boom thing, this detoxing. Every you know, year? Every, every year, more and more people getting into this thing. It's a kind of puritanical guilt thing. They've mm -hmm. been drinking, they've been smoking, they've been eating fatty foods, fast food, and they think, you know, they can't change their lifestyle, because no. they're, so they are, oh, what can I do? Buy a little pot of something or some pills or go on a regime. Drinking booze, smoking, eating fast food, and all the other things you do on a night out, all the other things you do in party season, have a downside. They make you feel terrible in the morning because you're filling your body with toxins. Now, you can either lay off the fun stuff altogether, which doesn't sound like fun, or you can look at detoxing. There's a whole industry devoted to it, all sorts of products, all sorts of ideas. But do any of them work? To find out, I suppose I'll have to get toxic. <laughs> What about, what about the, the detox products you can buy in the shops? Have you ever tried one of them? Yes. Have you really? Yes. What kind of a product? Just a, a three-day detox. Really? Yeah. Why did you try it? Um, you were feeling terrible or something? No, I uh, think as a woman you do it to lose weight. Really? And did you lose weight? No. <laughs> I think they're an absolute waste of time. But you gain energy and you gain, you gain, yeah, you gain stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a great thing. Eat, drink and be merry. For tomorrow, we detox. Uh, it's the uh, morning after the night before, as it so often is, uh, and I happen to have four or five days in front of me when I don't have to eat and drink and do terrible toxic things, and this would be a good time for me to detox. I don't really have time or the inclination to live on cabbage soup and citrus fruit and water for the, for the rest of my life. Fortunately, there is a range of products on the market which claim to be able to detox me in three to five days. But with so many things to choose from, how on earth am I supposed to know which one is the best? Someone who might be able to tell me is Catherine Collins, chief dietitian at St George's Hospital. She points out that some detox products include laxatives which will help cleanse your body in the way it knows best, in your poo. That makes you feel like you've cleansed your body to like poo anyway. Well, absolutely. But these things are, you know, sexing up your poo a little bit, aren't they? And then so this is basically sexy poo rather than... It is, because you've paid a lot for it. Does, does detox actually mean anything? It's the buzzword of the health yeah. industry these days. Does it mean anything it at all? It means nothing at all. It's a marketing term, not, not a medical term at all. Our bodies are treating the chemicals that we get from diet, from inhale inhaling fumes from our stressful lifestyles, the things we produce. Our bodies are dealing with that. If they didn't, we'd be in hospital, we'd be dead. You're buying um, an expensive adjunct to a normal diet and these sort of products wouldn't make a rubbish diet good. There's no law defining what a detox product is, so it's perfectly legal to put the word on any product without having to prove it's true. Boots has become one of the UK's biggest retailers of detox products since it introduced them three years ago. In January, after the party season, their sales shoot up by 40%. How, how does the detox work? How do they do that? How do they knock they out the They don't radicals? detox. They right. support your body to do what it, it can do of its own so accord. how do they support But they your... help you, you maximise that potential. It does have some information here about the essentials when do detoxing and mm -hmm. obviously tells you what all the key ingredients are. The, the vitamin C, vitamin E, yes. Yeah. Which you, but you, you, I mean, that's the, the, the vitamin supplements that people might be taking anyway. Potentially, way, yes. I suppose. Glutathione is not one that you would glutathione traditionally isn't. find. That's and what really is glutathione? That's a... It's, um, it's a really powerful antioxidant that's naturally stored in the liver. Right. And the liver is one of the main organs in the body for detoxing. But so if, if it's stored naturally, why do I need more? Um, again, you may not be getting adequate from your diet. Because there are those who would say in the kind of in the conventional medical industry that the whole notion of detox is, is just a sort of myth. 
there are different points of view, I admit that. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it comes back to the way we live our lives nowadays. We know the body is designed to detox, yeah. but it was designed, you know, a long, long time ago and maybe not equipped for the sort of pollution and the environment and the lifestyles that we have nowadays. Yeah. And I think something that can actually support your body in detoxing and kind of kickstart a healthier diet has to be beneficial. The, the benefits of, of detoxing are proven. Um, by? I think by, and the, the customers who tell us they really right. feel better, they feel the But benefits. they don't do lots of kind of, you know, placebo tests with... No, you, know, don't, kind of you don't tend to because at the end of the day, these are nutritional supplements. They're things that you would also find in food. Yeah. They're, not, they're not medicines. If spending money makes you feel better, then go ahead and buy detox products. But I haven't been able to find any medical evidence which suggests that you need to. So I'm just going to stick with a glass of water. Oh, the bacon's raw, for God's sake. Oh. Kerry, come here a minute, you. It's raw. It is raw, young lady. You're going to kill someone. You can't serve raw bacon. Not good enough. Not good enough. Take your apron off and go.